Good morning, everybody. Um, it is um, it's March 19th now. It's Thursday. So um, <clears throat> what an interesting week this has been. So today uh, I want to talk about Chapter 8 of A Wrinkle in Time. And what I want to do is um, give you guys a quote. We're going to start with a quote. I'm going to read it now. And this is, uh, this is in Chapter 8. And what's happened is that um, Charles Wallace has allowed himself to be uh, taken over by it. He's allowed his consciousness to be taken over by it. So now he's no longer Charles Wallace. He's like a mouthpiece, like a puppet for it. And <clears throat> Charles Wallace says this, and remember, it's really it through Charles Wallace speaking, and says, M Meg, <clears throat> you're supposed to have some mind. Why do you think we have wars at home? Why do you think people get confused and unhappy? Because they all live their own separate individual lives. I've been trying to explain to you in the simplest possible way that on Kamazots, individuals have been done away with. Kamazots is one mind. It's it. And that's why everybody's so happy and efficient. That's why old witches like Miss What's It don't want to have don't want to have happen at home. Okay. So that's the quote. And that's a point that um Charles Wallace is making about Kamazots. Now we can all see there's problems with that argument, okay? That um, you know, no individuality, none of that. We can all we can all see there's problems with it. But <clears throat> what's in, insidious about it? What what what's creepy about the argument is that it has a point. Um, it's not just saying it's not just saying we need to control everybody, blah blah blah, and then you know we're going to be you know that's that's how things are. It's actually saying we are making people's lives better. We are saying we are you know yes, there's a sacrifice. But we are making people's lives better, so the whole planet functions better, which which is a lot scarier. Um, so what I want you to do today, guys, is I've given you the quote. Okay, I've posted the quote on Google Classroom, and what I want you to do is to read the quote and then decide where you stand on it. So this is not a right or wrong answer. This is: Do you agree? Do you disagree? Either one is fine, but I want you to make a point about why you disagree, and then I want you to use some cit citations, some fa evidence from the uh, from the text to do it. So, um, <clears throat> and you can't use the text that I gave you. You have to go into the text, and remember, you've got all the. You can use pretty much anything you want, um, uh, as long as you're you know you're you're within the text, and you can even um, copy and paste from the Adobe PDF right into your response if you want to use that text that works fine and tell me what do you think okay so there's this question in google classroom that i posted and then just write your response and then yeah but you have to explain your response you can't just say um <clears throat> i think that's wrong here's a quote that's why i think it's wrong and this is why i think it's wrong okay you have to say i think it's wrong and explain answer why you think it's wrong give a quote and then explain your quote okay Remember that last explanation of the quote can't be a repetition of what you you're, you've said before. Say, okay, I've got the. I want you to, um, you know, this quote supports my point because it mentions this thing which hasn't been considered yet. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for a good races response. Um, remember, um, restate question, answer question, cite evidence, explain evidence, and then sum up. And um, and I'd like you to just be able to do it in a nice, uh, good paragraph. Okay, thanks a lot. I really look forward to reading the responses. I like seeing your work so far, and I'm trying to respond to everyone individually. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're not getting too much cabin fever. Um, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye.